Ha <laughs> You remember why you went into town? Yeah, yes, sir. What did I go town for? The mail. Oh, yeah, the mail. Yeah. Paul, you got a letter here from Judge Dean Benton Sylvester from Houston, Texas. You know him? Yeah, Dean's an old friend of mine. Yeah, listen to this. Dear Ben, two of my very dear friends will arrive in Virginia City on the third of next month, where they plan to do some investing in land. The names are Phil Axe and Henry Morgan. These men are honest as the day is long, Ben, and I would take it as a personal favor if you would act as their sponsor and introduce them around your community. Dean Benton Sylvester. Oh, what do you know? Isn't this the, isn't this the third of the month? It sure is, Bob. I'd better get into town and make some arrangements for them for a place to stay. Oh, well, Pa, you ought to know the best place to stay. Where's that? Oh, well, Widow Hawkins. She takes in boarders, doesn't she, Pa? Yes, sir, and Pa, she's such the best table in town. She's the best cook I ever saw in my whole life. Except for Hop Zane here. Yeah, she's very neat, too. Uh, the only person in Virginia City that changes her guest towels once a week. If you don't mind, gentlemen, I would prefer not to discuss Widow Hawkins. Now, wait a minute, Pana. She's got the only decent place in town. You can't expect a judge's friends to stay anywhere else. Uh, I suppose you're right about her having the best place in town to board. Well, well I'll, I'll go in and talk to her. Adam, would you uh, care to come with me? Well, why, Paul? Protection? Uh, now, Pa doesn't need any protection against the widow. I spent a whole day with her last year at the June picnic. Had a wonderful time. I spent the whole day with her at the June picnic because I happened to draw her name out of a goldfish bowl in which were the names of 50 other ladies. I hear tell, Paul, around town that you sort of arranged that. <laughs> now, just one long minute. And you look at me when I talk to you. Yes, sir. I know that half the people of Virginia City are trying to get me married off to Widow Hawkins. Now, maybe I have to take their smirks and innuendos, but, but I don't have to take it from my own family. Do you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You coming along, Adam? I'm with you every step of the way, Pa. Right down the aisle. <laughs> Dear boy, how nice of you to come calling. Well, Clementine, it's very nice to see you. You, uh, you know my, my son, Adam. Oh, yes, I know all your sons, especially the big one, who looks like a peel grizzly bear. Oh, that's a uh, horse. Oh, yes, I remember him very well. Uh, but uh, then you have another son, um... Oh, you... A tiny Tim, is it? Uh, no, Widow Hawkins, that's uh, little Joe. Oh, of course, little Joe. I have the most frightful time with knives. 
But do come in, and I'll brew you a nice cup of sassafras tea. Well, uh, Clementine, I, uh, actually, we really don't have that time. Now, to... Benjamin, that is not being very nibbly. For years I've been trying to show you the inside of but... my house, and now is the time. And I shall not take no for an answer. <laughs> We'll be jolly having your friends ensconced here as paying guests. Oh, the tea will be ready. You know, there's only one thing missing from this room. What's that? A trapeze bar hanging from the ceiling. Benjamin, I see you've been admiring some of my posters. Yes, sir. My, I do miss the theatre so. You know, that was how I met my late departed. Oh, um, Mr. Hawkins. Cool. He was a fine gent he were. Thank you. A better husband no lady could ever wish for. Courteous to the extreme, generous to a fault, and all muscle. Oh, I do miss Addie so very much. You have no idea how lonely it gets living in this huge place without a man around the house. Oh, uh, Clementine, thank you very much for the tea. Oh, you? not at all. <laughs> and you visiting them, it'll give us a chance to catch up on our talking. Well, goodbye, ducky. Come again, soon. <laughs> well, you uh, see some untown, I might as well tell Mr. Jefferson, Mr. Axe and Mr. Morgan are coming to Virginia City. All right, ducky. What was that again? Oh, I said we better not be late. Uh, Hop Singh is uh, serving stuffed duck for dinner. Yeah. You water these horses and meet me at the bank. Morning. Huh. Howdy, Smarter Sam. Oh, howdy, Ben. Up that's a little crooked there, Sam. Yeah, how's the electioneering going? There at the middle. Give me another crack at the mayor's office, and I'll put every crook in Virginia City behind bars. As head of the reform ticket, that is my platform. What are you doing in town? Oh, I, uh, I came to see uh, Clementine Hawkins. Oh. Sam, it was strictly business. Oh, oh, sure, business. Yes, business. Now, it just so happens that there are two wealthy businessmen coming here to Virginia City to invest in land. And I'm fixing for them to board at Clementine's place. So you see, it was strictly business. I beg your pardon, Ben. I'm sorry, Harry. Listen, uh, a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. Okay, you're going in my office. I've got some business to attend to. I'll be back in about ten minutes. Harry, my business won't wait. Are you in that much of a hurry to get out of town? Yeah. Oh, very well. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry. Fifty acres of river bottom land. Fellow that owned it to let it go for taxes shouldn't cost us more than fifty cents an acre. Oh, 
Excellent, Sam. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, you think we should get about $25 an acre for it? Well, now, Sam, let's not be greedy. Uh, well, let's ask uh, $20 an acre, and <laughs> then we can settle for 15 <laughs> It's not only conveniently close to the town, but over yonder, just beyond those trees, there's a lovely creek that flows through the property. We call it Sunny Acres. Well, it's beautiful. Just be beautiful. And it appears to be exactly what we've been looking for. What price are you asking for? Well, sir, we've decided to let it go at a sacrifice. Uh, shall we say $20 an acre? Well, that sounds fair. And uh, equitable. We'll buy it. Now, uh, gentlemen, do you wish to pay for the land in money or by check? Oh, uh, by cash, of course. Yes, as uh, soon as we sell our nest egg. Nest egg? An emerald. One of the world's largest and most perfect. See, it's called the Burma Rarity. And by consolidating our cash, gentlemen, in this beautiful gem, we eliminate the hazard of carrying large sums of currency upon our persons. How much is it worth? Well, it's been appraised at $50,000. But we are so anxious to get our land project development started, we are willing to let it go at $25,000 cash. $25,000? Precisely. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, my bank will be happy to, uh, to purchase your gem. Of course, I'll have to have the approval of the board of directors, but that will require only a few days. It... Uh, gentlemen, if you were to ask Clementine Hawkins, I'd say this should go as first come First serve. Do I understand that you want to buy the emerald? Cool. And wouldn't I be a foolish one to let pass such a quick profit? Where are you going to get the money? I have $15,000 cash and I'll borrow the other ten. Mr. Jefferson, do you think your bank would mortgage my boarding house and the 125 acres beyond it for $10,000? Well, I, I suppose so. If, if I have to. Good, then I shall come down to your bank today and get the cash. Oh, um, but perhaps I ought to have this surprised first. Oh, a uh, very wise precaution, madame. Positively flawless. Magnificent stone. Allow me to read you this little card. <clears throat> the Burma Rarity, a replica of the famed Emerald of Burma. Lately, a part of the collection of J. Willoughby Smythe San Francisco financier. Now, madam, we wish you to have this handsomely engraved little card absolutely free of charge, along with this genuine fake replica of the Burma rarity. Now, madam, I would advise that you keep this replica on the table here under glass. Yes, we'll add to the decor of your room, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, of course, the, uh, the genuine jewel, you will keep locked in your safe. Uh, what do you estimate the value of this stone to be, Mr. Nagel? Oh, Possibly as high as $50,000. Uh, certainly no less. Cool. Then I am to make a clear profit of $25,000. Uh, 
And my dear Benjamin made all this possible. <laughs> the Burma rarity and the imitation. Alike as two proverbial peas in a proverbial pod. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Gesundheit. <coughs> and uh, now, madam, shall we uh, complete the transaction? Oh, yes, of course. $25,000. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Oh, how clumsy of me. What happened? Uh, the emerald. I've dropped the Burma rare. Right here. What happened? What happened here? I'll go over there, Mr. Morgan, yeah, on your side. Her. I've got it. Uh, oh, it's all right. Uh, here you are, ma'am. The Burma rarity. Uh, well, Mr. Nagel, I believe that will be all. I wish to thank you for your cooperation. Wish you good luck and good afternoon. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good day, ma'am. Good day. And uh, now, gentlemen, if you'd care to pay us for the property, that's uh, 750 acres at $20 an acre, exactly $15,000. Uh, <clears throat> well, Mr. Jefferson, uh, we just like to transact business this late in the day. Yes, if you'd be willing to come to our room the first thing in the morning with the deed to the property, we'd be more than happy to transact the entire deal. Well, I'd hope to finish the transaction uh, at this Mr. time. Mr. Jefferson, uh, shall we say seven in the morning? Oh, very well. Seven in the morning. Good day, gentlemen. Uh, uh, very well. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Come in, Mr. Axe. Uh, good day, Mrs. Hawkins. Good day. Smiling, Sam. Good day. Good day. Oh, you beautiful money maker. Mm -hmm. Mr. Axe, do you realize this is the fifth time since the first of the year that we've sold the emerald? Yes, Mr. Morgan, I realize that. And do you realize that our total profit to date is exactly $125,000? <sighs> By the way, who is scheduled to be our next uh, uh, customer? Well, I believe uh, Ben Cartwright mentioned a rancher friend of his up in Oregon. Yes, and also remind me that I've got to order some more gla uh, <clears throat> emeralds. Oh, yes, put it back. Good morning, gentlemen. What are you Do come in. in. We want to talk to Mr. Axe, Mr. Morgan. We have here the deeds and titles to Sunny Acres. Now, all we have to do is to get their signatures. And their money. It seems my erstwhile board has left bright and early this morning. Left this morning? Yes, but only for a few days, just to complete some unfinished business. They left a note, and they told me they would return in one week, at which time they will complete their business transaction with you. Return within the week. Mm -hmm. And in the interim, they want you to prepare Sunny Acres for a town site. Repair sunny acres for a town site. What do they mean? Well, they request that you stake out individual lots on which they wish to build homes, and each lot is to be exactly one half acre in size. Each lot, one half acre in size. There are 750 acres. They want us to stake out 1,500 lots? Oh, dear. Precisely. And in case you don't know it, they borrowed your horse and wagon for necessary transportation. Well, so far, this deal has cost us one wagon and two horses. Cool, gentlemen. Think of all the money you'll make. Now, Mrs. Hawkins is right, Sam. Uh, well, we'd better get to it. <laughs> We've certainly got our work cut out for us the next few days. Good day, Mrs. Hawkins. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. <sighs>
round up some strays over on the other side of Virginia City. And you know that little strip of land down there, kind of the creek bottom place? Yeah, I've been there a couple of times. Yeah. Well, I just saw Mr. Jefferson from the bank and that smiling Sam out there driving stakes in the ground and marking off lots. Oh, yeah. Well, those land promoters are going to buy about 750 acres from them. They're going to divide them up into building lots. For who? Fish? Paul, have you ever seen that land in the springtime? No, it's always nice and green in the summer. Yeah, well, it ought to be nice and green in the summer. It's under six foot of water in the spring. What? Yeah. Smiling Sam and his reform ticket. And he's going to put every crook in Virginia City in jail. Oh, we better find Axe and Morgan in a hurry. Oh, I still got them strays around it, Paul. You coming along with me. These human strays are more important. You mean they, they left early this morning? Right and early. I, um, I believe they'll be back in about a week. I think I overheard them say something about Reno. Now, look, Clementine. When they return, warn them they must buy no property until they've had a chance to talk to me. I shall tell the gentleman that very thing. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, Clement why don't you and your son sit down and I'll get the tea thing. No, Clementine, uh, the horse and I uh, are out It would only take straight. off no, we, we, we a really, moment. Really don't have Now, Benjamin, to... do sit down. <laughs> Let me help you with that, Clementine. Oh, thank you so much, Benjamin. Uh, Clementine, I I've got to explain something. That loud crash that you heard. Now, horse here... Yes, I know. Is... Everyone wants to try the weights. That's the third table I've lost this month. <laughs> well, of course, I I'll replace the table. Please. Now, here's a little dainty for us. I don't suppose your celestial chef op scene makes anything like that. No, ma'am. He, he sure don't. I could never understand about Chinese cookery. Sautéed kumquats and numbing birds' tongues under glass. Now, Clementine, this, this bauble. That wasn't here the last time I was here, was it? Bauble, indeed. You are referring to the Burma rarity. Burma rarity? Yes. Your charming friends, Mr. X and Mr. Morgan, sold it to me for $25,000. Of course, I had to mortgage the house and to make up the rest of the money. But it's a good buy. And Mr. Nigel, the jeweler, estimates its value to be... $50,000. Mr. X and Mr. Morgan sold you this for $25,000. They did. They, they took a $25,000 loss. They did. They went to Reno. They did. Clementine, I'm sorry to have put you to all this trouble, but really, Hoss and you I have a great many things cake? to do. I, Clementine, perhaps some other time. Hoss and I, I have those, sure? all those trays to look after. And I'm okay, sorry about sorry. the table. But there, there are many things that we, we, we really should do. <laughs> do come back again, Oz. Well, thank you, ma'am. And you too, Ducky. <laughs> Paul? What? Did she say Ducky? Come on, I gotta send a telegram. To who? Judge Sylvester. did say ducky. They fleeced me of $25,000. Stop. Pretended to sell me a genuine emerald, but during the transaction switched an imitation for the real gem. Stop. Catch the crooks. Stop. See that they're hanged. Stop. Immediately. Stop. Best regards, Dean Benton Sylvester. And in his letter, Judge Sylvester said that Axe and Morgan were honest as the day is long. Mm -hmm. And the days are getting shorter all the time. Well, obviously, Axe and Morgan forged that letter. Uh, poor Widow Hawkins. Morgan's their place just to buy that fake emerald. Uh, boys, I, uh, I feel morally responsible for what's happened to, to Clementine Hawkins. I, I sponsored the crooks. I introduced them to her. And this is as much my problem as it is hers. Now, look, news of this must not get out to Virginia City. Well, why stall about her being swindled? They'll find out about it sooner or later anyway. Yeah, first let's find the crooks and get the money back for Clementine. Now, Adam, you stay here and take care of things. Hoss, little Joe, you come with me. 
Right, Paul. Hey, Paul. Paul! What? Wait a minute, listen. That telegraph feller told me that the widow Hawkins had sent a telegram to an insurance man to come out and appraise that gym. What? Yeah, he's gonna be here at 8 o'clock on the stage. I forgot. Eight. Oh. It'll be 8 o'clock by the time we can get to Virginia City. Too late. What are we gonna do now? I don't know. I can't let that insurance man get a look at that hunk of glass. Stay here. Seems to be doing all right so far. Sure, no, he doesn't try to kick it on the table. I'll jump through the window and grab it. Right. Now. They, they, they got clean away, Clementine. He left his hat. <laughs> Madam, I would suggest that you take this hat to the sheriff. It's a clue to the thief's identity. Oh, th th this is my hat. Hmm. Well, I still think that this should be reported to the sheriff. I, I think so, too, yes. Uh, when you recover the gem, Madam, if you will write to me, I will return and make another appraisal. From what little I saw of it, it was a superb emerald. Well worth the $25,000 you paid for it. Well, you, you mean that was a... A genuine emerald? Oh, I'd stake my professional reputation on that, sir. I bid you good night. Ducky, did you perhaps think it was an imitation? Now, um, this hat that you claim is yours, bend down. Bend down, Ducky. <laughs> I think we should sit down, the both of us, and have a nice, cosy chat. You just wait till I get my hands on those two. You just wait. How'd the widow take the news? How'd the widow take the news? When she discovered that, that those brothers of yours stole that emerald, she gave me an ultimatum. Uh, which is? She said that she would never turn her relatives over to a sheriff. Do you mean what I think you mean? <clears throat> she said that the whole incident would be forgotten if I... If I married her. She even had the gall to suggest she'd come over here to the house tomorrow and rearrange the furniture. Cool. Cool. I'm going after those two brothers of yours and you stick right here. Uh, pa, I was wondering, um, well, where do you think Clementine will want the barbells? Over the fireplace? Or would Addie's tights look better up there?
Hey, good morning. Oh! This thing's been punching a hole in my back all night, Joe. See him? Go get him. Run get him. That's a sick bottle. I knew I'd find a good purpose for that thing. <laughs> hey, hey. Come on. Come on. Come on, I'll go back to sleep. We gotta get those crooks before they get too far ahead of us. Dad, burn it. Joe, I'm so hungry I could eat a pack mule. Yeah. How come we didn't stop by the ranch house and pick up a sack full of grub before we left? Well, thanks a lot, pup. <laughs> Hey, Joe, I smell grub cooking. You smell grub? You know, I think I do. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Hey, horse, come on, we got some trade to do. <laughs> You got him, trust me. Well, I'm having a hard time getting through to the chief. Look, chief, chief, big medicine in piece of green glass. A cure, a cure warts and dandruff, make your hair shiny. Eat big totem for chief. Here, here, Joe, let me, let me try some sign language. Uh, look here, chief. Am I to understand that you gentlemen wish to dispose of this bauble? Yeah. In exchange for food? Oh, that's what we sort of had in mind, yeah. Very well. There's mutton stew in the pot. Help yourselves. Hot dog. Thank you. Perhaps on the next stagecoach, there will be a tourist gullible enough to take this piece of glass off my hands at a small profit. Mr. Morgan, allow me. Thank you, Mr. Axe. You know, when I think of those two petty crooks out there measuring lots and pounding stakes into the ground, <laughs> it warms the cockles of my heart. Mine too, Mr. Morgan. They were such rank amateurs, oh, you know. <laughs> Imagine not being able to tell the difference between a cheap piece of glass and a real emerald. <laughs> the Burma rarity. Ah, uh, not beauty. Huh? <laughs> huh? What's the matter, Mr. Axe? Huh? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Morgan, but uh, it, it seems to have lost weight. Oh, oh my. Uh, one moment. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, this is a fake. What? Oh, that is a fake. Try this oh, one. I see. Oh, a fake. This one? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, a fake. That one? Yeah, a fake. Mr. Axe, I'm afraid we goofed. We goofed, Mr. Morgan. You goofed. I goofed? Yes, you're supposed to pull the switch. Now, now, who pulled the switch on who? Now, enough of this soul-searching, Mr. Axe. I suggest we return to Virginia City and try to recoup our property. Post-haste. Or faster. <clears throat> We came for the real emerald. Uh, well, let's have it. The, uh, did you gentlemen say the, uh... You came for the real emerald? That's right. That's oh. right. The one you sold to the widow Hawkins and then stole back from her. Every time I think about the way you two crooks took that poor little widow woman, it makes me mad enough to bite a porcupine. Yeah, I'd sure like to see that. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Morgan, uh, I believe they have us dead to rights. Uh, <clears throat> if you'll permit me, sir. When I started on my career of swindling, Mother warned me that retribution would catch up with me someday. Would that I had taken her advice. Come on, give me that. That's the real one. Yeah, you can tell it's a real one just by looking at it, can't yeah. you? Yeah, if we didn't have to get this back to the wood. To save our Paul's neck, I'd, I'd skin you two alive. Yeah, well, I sure wouldn't like to see that. 
Oh, uh, young gentleman, uh, would you mind telling me uh, what you did with the, uh, the imitation emerald that we left with the widow? We traded it for grub. Would you mind saying to whom? Yeah, a fellow named Chief Crazy Fox. Chief Crazy Fox. Chief Crazy Fox. I believe he's that noble redskin that's also in our profession. Yes, he runs that concession stand down there between here and Virginia City. Mr. Morgan, I'd suggest that we renew our acquaintance with that worthy post haste. Or faster. Wait. He saw the buckboard go by. And the other two went by early this morning. Yeah, thank you very much, Chief. like to gamble it for five dollars. Gamble? Poker or dice? Aha! Neither one. There's a new game in the Westminster. It's called the shell game. And it is played very simply with one, two, three little shells and one very small little pea. Now, the object of the game, sir, is to tell me under which shell the pea lies. Now, watch very closely, because if you can tell me, you win. Hey! Glad I caught up with you two highwaymen. <laughs> Let's have a look at this thing. Is this the emerald you stole from Clementine Hawkins? Oh, no, you know that one was a fake. This is a real thing. We caught the two crooks in Reno and got it back from them. Boys, the one you stole was the real thing. This is another one of the imitations. Huh? Yeah. Are you sure, Pa? I'm positive. Just a minute. What did you do with the one that you so shrewdly stole from the widow? The one which is the real Burma rarity? Speak up. We traded for some grub. For some grub? That Bernie Paul, we are starving. We'll get it back, Paul. What? Uh, come on.
Now, uh, uh, you say you gave it to this uh, girl. Yeah, which way'd she go? Yeah, it's imperative that we find out. Yeah. Imperative. Hmm, in times of stress such as this, my memory sometimes fails me. Yeah, I figured that. Would a ten dollar bill help you to remember? It all comes back to me now. <laughs> she was on the stagecoach bound for Virginia City. Virginia, Virginia way, City. Oh. As to which way she went, in times of stress, such as this, my memory sometimes fails me. Would a ten dollar bill help relieve the stress? Virginia City! Joe, you take this street and you check the registry at the hotel. Hoss, right. take this street as far as you can go. If you find any girl that fits the description, you let me know immediately. I'll be around here somewhere. Yes, sir. Come on, get going. Is there something else you No, thanks. Let uh, somebody else win the money. Good afternoon, sir. Would you care to wager one small silver dollar to prove that the hand is not quicker than the eye? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I think I, I would like to wager that. Very good, sir. Now watch the pea under the shell. Gentlemen, watch the pea and watch the shells. Watch me moving quickly about the table and tell me where the pea is. Hey. Under the middle one. I'm so sorry, sir. Uh, that that uh, gem that you're wearing interests me. Would you, uh, you care to wager, say, five dollars against that? As you like, sir. Again, watch the pea under the shell. We move the shells around. Now, under which shell does the pea lie? I'll say, uh, under the middle one again. Must be under the middle one. <laughs> Obviously, you've played this game before, sir, because the pea is under the middle shell. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you forgot your five dollars. Oh, how do you keep that? <laughs> it's just a chunk of glass. Well, but such nice glass. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you again, Mr. Cartwright. Now, if you'll kindly hand over the Burma rarity. Yeah, hurry up. Well, you, you, you want... I guess if you... You want the Burma rarity, I guess I'll... I'll just have to give it to you.
But ain't you gonna help him? Nope. This one's a fake, another fake, another, and another. They're all fakes. Ah, now this is the one I examined the other day, the genuine emerald. And what a beauty it is. Uh, madame, uh, would it be amiss if I presumed to ask you a question? Uh, could it have been possible that... Oh, no. Uh, what Mr. Morgan is trying to say, madame, is how could a sweet little old lady like oh, you... Oh, lady! Look here, you two crooks. I knew you were crooks from the very beginning. Your modus operandi gave you away. You see, Mr. Morgan, what did I tell you? Yeah, but look at him, Mr. Axe. Who would ever have suspected that... Gentlemen, many years ago, when I was in the theater, I was billed as a female prestidigitator. I knew you were planning the switcheroo, exchanging the real emerald for the fake. So I just... <laughs> pulled the switcheroo first. Hmm. Mrs. Hawkins? How do you do? Well, sir, mighty glad to see you back. Mighty glad. We've got the 1,500 lots staked out for you. And now are you ready to complete the deal? Gentlemen, I'm afraid that Mr. Morgan and I must leave town again. Leave town? Where are you going this time? I'm escorting him to San Francisco, Mayor. But we've gone to a lot of work preparing Sunny Acres as a town site. When will you get back to Virginia City? We'll take over Sunny Acres. About 20 years? Clementine, you're an amazing woman. Absolutely amazing. Oh, Benjamin, our gallant. And in front of all these people. I just knew when we had our little talk yesterday that you and I would see eye to eye. Now, Clementine, we, uh, we did get the, get the emerald back for you, didn't we? Yes, but I... And uh, we did have some sort of an agreement. You mean? Mm hmm. Cool. I won the war and lost the peace. Well, as we say in the theatre, there's always another booking for a good act. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing woman. <laughs> <laughs>